Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Gareth Martin, and big data is all over the place here, but, but data for data's sake, is, uh, is, is that even useful? Well, no, of course not. I mean, there's so much data out there that's irrelevant to a lot of our customers, and the important thing about big data is identifying the really relevant pieces that have value. So number one, you know, find the stuff that's relevant and then filter out all the other stuff. You don't want to store or analyze data that's not relevant to you. So that's the key point in big data. You got to find the value. You got to find the, the use case that drives, you know, real top or bottom line you know, business value rather than just trying to analyze data for data. So, so how, do you, how do you make that assessment when you've got uh, like a flood of data coming in? Yeah, I mean, for different companies, it's, it's different you know, use cases that they want to they wanna address. So really, it's about looking at the challenge. So what are the key drivers for your business? What are your you know, primary business unit KPIs? And how can you find new data sets, new ways to analyze that information that really impacts those KPIs that you know, are how you, manage, you know, measure your, you know, your performance? And so it's, for some companies, it's about driving efficiencies in operations, efficiencies in the use of, of machinery. Other guys, it's more about looking about at the, improving the interaction with the customer, improving the understanding of the customer and how you optimize your interaction with them. And that can be you know, pulling information from the public space, from um, social media, uh, or from you know, blogs and forums like yours, so you understand what the market is talking about and what's relevant, but understand that, you know, how, how do you mine that information? And then use that information to drive value, to improve your understanding of the market, improve your understanding of the customer. And then on the other flip, it was you know, talking about the machine and sensor stuff. We're talking to a lot of big manufacturers who want to do predictive maintenance on their machinery. So if you know that something's going to fail, if, a, if, a, if an element of your machinery is going to fail, you can predict that failure and fix it before it happens. Decrease the downtime, down improve the efficiency of your, of your machinery. So yeah, it's about really looking for those value, those pieces of value and trying to determine what data sets can drive that value. So, so in a lot of ways it's really about figuring out what, what questions you want the answer to before you, you go in and, and gather the data so that you've actually got something to work with? For sure, yeah. Don't build a platform before you know why you're building it. Or don't build a solution before you know what you're trying to solve. So really for us it's about step number one, work with you know, the real end consumers of the data um, and, and try to determine exactly what you're trying to get out of it. Determine that, uh, that there is you know, value in that data and then build your platform. You know, so we actually give access to our clients to some of our platform in, in private cloud, virtual private cloud, so they can play on it and they can try and test out some use cases to see if there's value in the use cases that they're trying to build. And of course the other element is the skills, right? So one of the big challenges for our customers is what skills do I need to you know, get value from this? To what, what's a data scientist and what kind of data, data scientist do I need? And that's the big thing. So a lot of co companies actually don't realize they often have data scientists hidden inside their organization. They don't even know they're there, but they are, oftentimes they are. They may not be the data scientists they need, and we, we can help them out with that as well. But you know, give them access to those skills, make them, let them understand what those skills you know, really entail, and then start building out those use cases on one of our test environments. So aside from... Uh not necessarily planning for the use cases you want to capture ahead of time. Are there any other common mistakes that people make when they're making, they're planning their big data solutions? Um, I think people to sometimes jump both feet in and, and say, you know, we want to move this data into this you know, platform and store it all and analyze it all because we just want to explore and play. The problem is that that can be costly, right? So storing a load of data, like we were saying, data for data's sake is it's not the best approach to this. So really, you want to you know look at the the use case that you want to drive, and just choose the data sets that are relevant to that use case. Um, another one, you know, choosing the technology, that's really difficult. There are so many technologies out there that say that they're solving the big data agenda, and knowing which one to choose, that's, that's really difficult. So we find a lot of um, the sort of the technology audience are confused about which one to pick, and understanding what's coming out, what's the latest thing, you know, that's difficult too. So. And that goes back to the situation of what question are you trying to answer? And then determine the technology that best fits that question. 
Um, you know, people often just associate some of the, you know, the, 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 the more popular tools with big data. So what can Hadoop do? What can MongoDB do? How do I use big databases like Vertica? And they all have their uses. It's about determining which use case should be implemented on which one. And that's one of the big challenges. So is there still room for little data in this world of big data? Yeah, I mean, actually, the key for big data is not storing everything. Like we said, just find the bits that have the value. Little data is where the real value is. You know, what you want to do is you want to, like from your, your big data, you want to find the little bit that has the value. And so it's exploring that and, and determining it. But you know, our traditional uh, you know, information ecosystems that we have inside of our organizations, our data warehouses, our ERPs, this, this is our core business. You know? So what we want to do is we want to maintain that capability, understand how we integrate that with this new agenda, this, this big data agenda. So you know, keep doing what you're doing and then enhance it with this additional capability. So it's really about adding capability, not necessarily trying yeah, to rip and replace. It. Yeah, don't replace it. It's, it's about that added capability, you know, taking it to the next level. And it's about innovation, right? It's about trying to create a competitive advantage over your competitors. You know, what can you do that maybe they haven't seen that they can do yet? So really, it's about the innovation agenda, too. So look at these information sets that are available to you and see how you can use them in new ways to drive that value that we talked about. Integrating you know, machine and sensor data with your um, supply chain or with your, uh, with your, maintenance, uh, your maintenance procedures. Integrating those elements is how you drive the value and if you can do that better than somebody else then you can drive additional you know, cost savings in your organization, efficiency in production, the kind of things that impact the price and impact the customer experience. And that's what we like to try and do. All right, well, thanks, Gareth. Sure, thanks very much for having me.